Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got another unique mini PC to look at today. This is the TechLast X22, and what this is is an all-in-one that is all inside of this relatively small monitor here. So this is a 21 and a half inch display, and uh, the little mini PC is baked right into it. So you basically get a, a full-fledged computer for really the size of a, a typical 21 inch monitor or thereabouts. I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, though, that this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. They've been loading us up with all this stuff lately. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. This is powered by a Pentium N3150 Brasswell processor. Uh, there is a version on the GearBest website with a 3160 processor, but these two should perform uh, roughly the same as what you're going to see with this one. It looks like the uh, 3150 might be an older variant of this, which is the one I have right now. Uh, the one that they're making available to the United States has the 3160. It costs about $320 as you see it, uh, but you should know that although I'm running Windows on here, uh, there there is no operating uh, system installed on it, nor is there a keyboard or mouse included with it. So you get the computer and it boots up. I think they uh, put free DOS on it, so you can get it running DOS if you want when you first get, out, get it out of the box, but you will need to uh, bring your own operating system. It is upgradable. They have four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM built in, but you can go up to 16 if you want. It's in single channel configuration right now. It has a 128 gigabyte SSD. That's an M2 SATA drive that you can also upgrade later. So you do have some uh, options for upgradability on that 21 and a half inch display. I believe it's IPS. It's got pretty decent viewing angles, really nice and sharp to look at. I was quite pleased with the display quality. I wish it was a little bit brighter, but uh, not bad and uh, really pretty good to look at and do work on and other things, which we will be doing here in a minute. Now, I do want to show you where the ports are because that is the one downside with this one. All the ports are on the bottom here and they're kind of obscured by the stand. Uh, you can see how lightweight all of this is, but it has optical audio out. You've got analog in and out for your uh, regular audio, uh, USB 2, gigabit ethernet, two USB 3 ports, VGA out, and HDMI out. Unfortunately, and this is the one thing that I was hoping this thing would do, but it doesn't, uh, it will not act as a separate monitor. So you can't plug in something into it and have that device appear on the screen. I thought that would be a really killer feature if it did do that, because you can almost have this be like a little server that runs inside of your monitor and connect a more powerful computer to it uh, to have it uh, also work with it. But unfortunately, that HDMI port is only an HDMI out and not an HDMI in. Uh, they did, though, merciful, mercifully uh, put in a uh, additional USB port in the back here that you can get to easier. This is a USB 2 port. I put in my little dongle for my keyboard trackpad combo here so that I can uh, more easily access the computer. But remember, you get no operating system, no keyboard or trackpad or mouse. Uh, this is it. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, so let's kick things off with our YouTube test, as we always do. We've got a 1080p 60 frames per second file playing here, and it's working just fine. No drop frames. It's keeping up with uh, everything that it needs to keep up with. So I think for Netflix and YouTube, uh, this should be fine. And this is uh, on par with other uh, PCs in its class, so not too bad on that front. Uh, we'll go over here to the NASA homepage and see how fast it browses the web. It does have wireless AC on board, so if you have a newer router, it'll take advantage of those faster speeds. You get the 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz bands. Uh, the NASA website here is loading up as I would expect it to on this class of PC, so not too bad on that front either. So I think you'll do well uh, doing work and web browsing and email on this thing without any issues. And on the Octane benchmark test, we got a score of 8037, which also puts it right where I would expect it to compared to other computers running with similar processors. Uh, this is kind of a mobile chipset, so you'll see a number of laptops running with this chip as well. It performs about the same as those laptops do, which is a good thing, which means that it's not doing any better or worse than those. Uh, so I, th I think you'll have a pretty good uh, experience overall uh, working with this. Let's take a look over at some word processing stuff now and see how well it can handle some uh, more demanding tasks while you're uh, designing your latest uh, Blockbuster document here. So we have our newsletter template that I usually like to load up on these PCs. It renders in about the same speed as I've seen other PCs in its class render in, and it seems to be doing all those things as you would expect them to. So for a work computer, if you're looking for something quick and easy that doesn't take up a lot of room, I think this will certainly do the trick. All right, so let's take a look now at some gaming. I've got Minecraft running here. This is the original version of Minecraft that most folks still run, and we're getting about 20 to 25 frames per second at 1080p running with the uh, performance enhancing plugin called OptiFine. So not the best performance. I typically don't see good Minecraft performance out of these Brasswell chips. So this one certainly is uh, no exception to that rule. So I don't think this is uh, necessarily a computer to buy for the Minecraft fan in your life, but it can run it. 
And I was able to coax it into playing Rocket League, not all that well, but we've got it here running at 720p with all the settings turned down. It looks pretty ugly. Um, we're getting about 20 to 25 frames per second or thereabouts on here. So you can play the, this game, but uh, it won't be all that great of an experience. And this is typical, again, for uh, the processor that we have uh, installed on this particular device. Uh, there are some games, though, that do well, like the older games that came out maybe 10 years ago or earlier. A lot of retro emulation should work okay. Uh, some of the retro-inspired games on Steam might run on here as well, but uh, any of the modern AAA stuff, I would not consider uh, this to be a good platform to run them on. And the 3D Mark CloudGate gaming benchmark shows us that this computer performs pretty much as other Brasswell chips do. 1,981 was the score that we got on that one. As you can see here, its graphics scores line up with other chips that are part of that Brasswell line. So uh, on par with other machines, and again, not so great as a gaming device. All right, let's take a look now and see how well it does with multimedia playback. We'll do a, a Blu-ray MKV file here first to see how that plays back, and everything pops up pretty quickly with Cody here, no drop frames or other issues. So I think we've got a pretty good playback experience here as expected. And I think if you've got uh, some MPEG-4 stuff that you have stored on your computer or other devices, it'll play back uh, just fine here. Uh, what I did notice, though, is that it really chokes on some of these HEVC files, even some of the lower bitrate ones. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a good HEVC playback platform, uh, but it does do fine for uh, MPEG-4 and H.264 content. But if you do plan to watch movies or listen to music, get yourself some external speakers or some headphones because the audio out of this thing is terrible. The speakers are uh, really, really bad. It'll sound better if you plug something else in. It does not support Bluetooth out of the box. You'll need to add that through a dongle later. So if you do want to try uh, Bluetooth audio, uh, make sure you get yourself a dongle. They're not that expensive, but uh, there is no built-in Bluetooth on this. But uh, what it does do quite well is run alternative operating systems. And I was able to install Ubuntu Linux without any aggregation aggravation whatsoever. It detected everything, including the audio and the Wi-Fi, even my keyboard multimedia buttons work here. Uh, so it was quite a smooth experience getting that to work on this. And that's not always the case with these mini PCs uh, that I'm buying from overseas. Many times you have to go hunt through these websites in Chinese for certain drivers and everything. This one just came right up uh, both with Windows and uh, with Ubuntu here. So I was quite pleased with that. It performs very well on the Linux side as well. I'm sure other Ubuntu variants will also work with it. So if the uh, cost of adding an operating system feels prohibitive to you, you can uh, just go out and download the Ubuntu ISO and get a fully functional operating system complete with all the Office apps and a web browser and uh, be on your way with it. So I was very pleased to see uh, that all come together like that. Now, before we close out, I do want to give my usual warning about these off-brand PCs. Uh, you may get good support from GearBest in the early days after the sale, but uh, the manufacturer may not be there to help you if something happens down the road. And the reason is that these companies do not have a presence throughout most of the world, like some of the major name brands do. So uh, you'll have to go onto their website. They do have some English on their website, but a lot of it begins to revert back to Chinese once you start getting into the support area. So I'm not sure uh, what kind of long-term support you will get on this. So if something happens you know, eight or nine months down the road, you might be uh, on your own with it. But uh, if you are willing to take that risk, I often say buy these at your own risk. This isn't a bad little machine, especially if you want something compact that uh, has everything all enclosed and can run alternative operating systems like Linux here uh, very nicely. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.